Okay, Mr. Wilson, um, it's the last show on your tour, I understand. How has, been, how has the tour been for you? The tour's been very interesting. We <coughs> just played for some very good crowds on the tour. You've played for European crowds? Yeah, in the UK and, and in Paris and Amsterdam. Mm -hmm. How do they respond to Gershwin's music, which is American music, of course? Well, they appreciate music uh, over here better than Americans do. And I'm glad, that, glad we could play the Gershwin album for them. What do you mean they appreciate it more? How do you... Well, you can tell by the way they applaud and, you know, how long they applaud for and, you know, and everything. They have a better feeling for what you do? Yeah, yeah, they do, they do. Um, why Gershwin? Well, they came to me and asked, his family came to me and asked me if I would do an album called Wilson Sings Gershwin. I said, sure. So we got together and we rehearsed 14 songs and did them. You've got a personal connection with Gershwin? No, I don't have with Gershwin, no, I don't have any personal connection. But with his music, was it an, an inspiration Pardon? for you? With his music, was that an inspiration for you? Yeah, yeah. In what way? From what age? So for, since I was two years old. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did you get to know Gershwin? I, I, through his music, Rhapsody in Blue. Uh -huh. um, and I understand that it's your mother who first uh, played it for you? Yeah, when I was two years old, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, she took me over to my grandmother's house, and my grandmother had a, one of those old 78s, you know, on records, and uh, Rhapsody in Blue. Was it more difficult for you to perform Gershwin's music than it is to perform your own? Pardon me? When you perform Gershwin, which is somebody else's music, is that more difficult for you than when you perform your own songs? No, actually, it's about the same. Yeah, mm -hmm. about the same. Uh, I think it, it must be different performing somebody, somebody else's music, isn't it? Uh, more difficult to get into the arrangements and things like that? No, I actually came very naturally. My, my uh, <coughs> arranger, Paul Merton, arranged all the uh, for, for the Gershwin album. He, he wrote all the violin arrangements. Mm -hmm. How important is Gershwin for American music? Well, Gershwin in, in American music is, is just, you know, he's the greatest and everybody, you know, he's the best. Mm -hmm. Can you tell a little bit more about it? Why is he the best? Why is he the best, Gershwin? Yeah. I think because of his brother Iowa it inspired him. I think when he wrote lyrics, it made him want to write Rhapsody in Blue and songs like that. I think. I think. I don't know. Just sort of a competition. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, which takes me to the to the Smile Sessions, which uh, you are going to release finally uh, in a couple of months. People say um, that when it first went wrong in the sixties, it was also because of sense of competition between you and, for example, the Beatles, is that true? Right. Mm -hmm. um, when you hear these tracks again on, on, on the box, um, is it difficult for you when you hear them again? No, actually it's smooth, it goes very easy, easy for me. Mm -hmm. And why are you releasing everything now? What? Why are you releasing the box now, the Smile Sessions box? Because we think people would really appreciate all the, the hard work that went into that making of the Smile. <clears throat> the smile, the smile, the original smile album came out, and now this box set his has all kinds of uh, stuff that we hadn't heard for years. You know, for people who really don't know what Smile is about, can you explain what you had in mind when you when you made it in the sixties? What you Pardon wanted me? to do? Uh, for people who who don't know anything about what Smile is. You call it the Teenage Symphony for God. Right. Um, but can you explain what you tried to do in the 60s with Smile um, and what made it so difficult? Why, well, why it because, went wrong? First of all, we wanted to capture the mood of early Americana and, and we did very well so, did it very well. Mm -hmm. But, but why, it went, why it went wrong? What was so, so difficult about finishing the project? Uh, nothing. We had a lot of fun doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, going back to Gershwin, um, there are some unfinished uh, pieces of music in the show which you finished. Um, why did you want to do that? What? There are some unfinished uh, pieces of music by Gershwin in the show. Huh? I learned those. There were 104 songs 
and we went round and down to two, and then we wrote new songs around those two chords. Uh -huh. And why did you want to include unfinished music? Because they asked us to. The, fam the family, of course. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. And did they explain to you why they came to you for this project? I don't know. I don't know. Were they Beach Boys fans? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Uh -huh. um, what is the connection between Gershwin and the Beach Boys? Was there a connection? I don't know. You, you played them both and they, he inspired you, so maybe there is a connection between the two? Maybe so, yeah. Uh -huh. But you can't explain what it is? No. No? <laughs> okay. Um, going back to the, the Smile Box, you already released um, some of the tracks on an earlier Beach right. Boys box. You re-recorded uh, a lot of the tracks. What's going to be new on this release? Uh, on the box that we have now, the, the five CDs. Are there going to be things on it that we haven't heard before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Many things, or has, have, have most of the things been released? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, your next project is going to be a Disney cover project. Right, we, we finished that album. We finished it. It's finished already? It has, it has When You Wish Upon a Star on it and some very pretty songs, very pretty tunes. Mm -hmm. uh, can you name a few more tracks that are on it, things, things we know? Uh, this one, Stay Awake and ba Baby of Mine and I Just Can't Wait to Be King by Alan John and, uh, and a song that Randy Newman wrote that I can't remember. Mm -hmm. But they're wonderful songs. You chose them yourself? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what does Disney mean for you? It means uh, uh, success and uh, inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, it's also very American, Disney. It's known all over the world, but just like Gershwin. Um, is it a coincidence that you are revisiting these icons of, America, of American culture so late in life? Yes, yes. I think that's about it for 10 minutes. I think we're about done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much for the interview. Bye bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, guys.